In the name of Allah, may peace and salutations be upon the Prophet and upon his family and followers to proceed on the authority, hadith number 28, on the authority of Abu Najih al-Irbad ibn Sariya, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, gave us a sermon by which our hearts were filled with fear and tears came to our eyes. So we said, O Messenger of Allah, it is as though this is a farewell sermon, so counsel us. He, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I counsel you, counsel you to have taqwa, fear of Allah, and to listen and obey, even if a slave were to become your leader. And indeed, he, he among you who lives long will see great differing or controversy. So you must adhere to my sunnah, my example, and to the example of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the rightly guided caliphs, those who guide to the right way. Cling to it. And beware of newly invented matters, for every innovation or newly invented matter is a misguidance. It was related by Imam Tirmidhi, who said it was a good and sound hadith. So in this hadith we see that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he gave the Sahaba, the companions, a wa'ad. He gave them a sermon. And this is a reminder which has with it an arousal of interest that causes one's desire to do something, and it causes fear. So it's an emotional type of address. And through this, and you can see the impact of this because the hearts were moved by it, the hearts feared, and the eyes, they cried. So the Sahaba, the, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, it's as though it's a farewell sermon. So give us counsel. And this is from the fiqh, or the understanding of the companions of the Messenger of Allah. Peace and blessings be upon him, and may Allah be pleased with them all. That they realised that this was an opportunity for them to get some parting advice from the Messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. And the Prophet gave them the advice, I give you the counsel of having fear, or taqwa of Allah. And as we've seen before, taqwa... It is that an individual takes a protection from the punishment of Allah by doing that which he ordered and staying away from that which he prohibited. And to have, um, to hear and obey, i.e. to hear and obey those who are in authority over you. So you hear what they say and do it and you refrain from that which they prevent you from doing, even if a slave were to be your leader. So this is the extent. And this is the meaning behind the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means, O oh, you who believe, follow Allah and follow the messenger and those who are in authority over you. For indeed, whosoever lives amongst you, or i.e. whosoever lives long amongst you, they will see much differing. And this is something that happened after the death of the Prophet. Peace and blessings be upon him at the time of the companions and then he ordered them in this case when they see this differing he gave them the cure for this and he told them adhere to my sunnah i.e. my way and the sunnah on the way of the khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdiyin the rightly guided guided khulafa or caliphs and the khulafa the caliphs they are those who um came after the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and um, led the Muslims. And at the top of them um, were the four who came after, uh, who were appointed, the four who came after, Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, then Ali. And he, he, he gave them, peace and blessings be upon him, these four specifically, he gave them the title of being rightly guided, because... Allah Azza wa Jal, he had given them the tawfiq to be guided. Uh, cling to it and adhere to it. And here, the wording was, cling to it even if it is with your molar teeth. And this is a linguistic device used by the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to show the extent to which one should cling and adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. So it's something that's very, very precious. What yakum and beware from the newly invented, invented matters. And this is that which has been introduced into the religion without an evidence and that has no previous um, 
It has no previous precedent in the religion. And that shows us as well that when we order with the sunnah, we also warn against falling into innovation. For indeed, every innovation is misguidance. And this is unrestrictedly. Every innovation in the religion is a misguidance. May Allah Azza wa Jalla give us a tawfiq to act upon this and to remember this hadith at, at times of fitan uh, and trials and tribulations. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyya Muhammad. And may peace and salutations be upon our Prophet, upon his family and followers. Thank <laughs> you.